prehistoric turtle star. It's a 250 million BC. You know, being able to send us through time is a pretty good superpower to have. Very <laughs> middle of a thought and everything, and you just cut your own idea off. I don't even remember what you were talking very about. Very advantageous. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, welcome to the dinosaur times. Welcome to the dinosaur. And apparently, era. the Foot Clan existed that far back too. I guess he can send his own men back through time if he can send us. Oh, he just—he already sent them all through time to kill us. That's it. He didn't think we were just gonna die because of time travel. He just figured, oh, we gotta kill them too. It's like the Gygus plan, where it's like, well, if you destroy the world in the past, there can't be a world in the future, you know? I mean, it's, it's sound logic. Butterfly effect and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, a bit more complex than butterfly effect, but yeah. I do sort of think a thing that time travel stories, like, don't get right is that intentions are really powerful. Like, just because somebody, like, you know, failed at doing something like their first time doesn't mean they're gonna give up on it forever, and they probably get to roughly that same point in their life anyway. That depends on the person, though. If it's a person who has, like, a weak will, then they probably will actually give up on their first try. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I was like that. I didn't want to, like, have to, like, practice and, like, be patient with getting good at anything. I just wanted to find the thing that I was inherently good at. <laughs> I mean, that is a mm. thing of, like, ADHD, that's a thing for, like, a lot of people. Yeah, my parents would always tell me, like, Emil, you can be good if you practice, and I'm like, oh, practice cactus, is what I used to always say. <laughs> well, did practice you practice cactus. being a cactus? <laughs> I should have tried that, that would have been really easy. I, no, I know you, you can't stand perfectly still. Uh, <laughs> I can lift my arms up for a long period of time, Ah! Oh. This is good, wow! I don't know if our controllers show up, but it sounds like we're like spanking babies over here. <laughs> wow. That, what kind of babies are you spanking well, that click? I'm, I'm saying that, like, if you ever hear, like, professional melee players, like, what their controllers sound like, it really sounds like that. Why do you know what that sounds like to begin with? <laughs> Not the melee thing, I meant the, the spanking babies thing. I think you'd be more impressed that I'd been to a melee tournament no, or like watched you, competitive you've Smash. To, you've been to PAX, I know you've seen melee tournaments. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I don't know why I know that like, blood tastes like pennies, I just do. Well, that's just by having tasted blood, and you can do that just by like, cutting your tongue. Well, yeah, but it also means I put money in my mouth at some point in my life, and I don't remember when I did it. Oh, but, okay, mm. you know what? Well, you're, you're pointing out for me, you're saving me the effort here. Yeah, but like, I don't know why I know that, I just kinda do. Right? <laughs> You know, you don't have to like. <laughs> you strike you're the kind of guy who would like, actually try the taste. You, know, you don't have penny. to like see like. You don't have to see like the supernatural to know that it's real. You know, you just do. It's the same um, principle. You know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> hmm. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. No, Holy you, cow! You're definitely, you're definitely like okay. a trance at this point. Mm. This is just like all the energy from like us not recording in person just. Like bursting all at once. Man. All the, the chugga isms. You ever notice how, like, wheels tend to spin? You're not Man. high. Nice try. I've seen that sometimes. That's John, you're not being fair to me. <laughs> Welcome to. Oh, uh, yeah, wow. The spooky Monster Man! I don't actually remember what this guy's name is from the show. I, for some reason, thought he was, like, a pizza monster or a dough monster, but I think he has a different name. He basically looks like Clayface from well, Batman. Well, I, uh, I officially dubbed him Dough I Missed. <laughs> Damn. So, so I have a weird story about this guy in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, back when I was a kid, there was an arcade which had this game nearby, and I managed to play the game far enough to get to this boss. And uh, I walked away from the machine for a second, thinking like, oh, I'm out of quarter six, I can't play anymore. I found a quarter in my uh, in my pocket and started walking back to it. But some kid walked up to the machine, and oh. I was like, hey, come on, let's, let's take on the boss together. He instead walked up and timed out my character, and then oh which caused the game over, then walked away from the machine, even though I clearly oh. had a quarter. Like, hey, come on, dude, I'm trying to jump back in. <laughs> so, I had, so I was just like, what an asshole. <laughs> and that's why I've that's hated people since. Mm. It's your tragic villain <laughs> backstory. Exactly. <laughs> that's why I'm Raphael right now. Uh, <laughs> Reminds me of like, there's this really terrible, like, villain backstory, though, but I don't know if I want to say it because it's kind of a spoiler for something else. Oh, it really bothers me, but I don't know, maybe I'll tell you about it. Oh, no, never mind. Here we go. And thus, we save prehistoric times from pizza dough. Bada-bam.
And now we travel through time yet again, leaving the prehistoric era and landing Ooh. on a boat! Oh yeah. Need screenshots of this in Nintendo Power. Oh, this is Token Razar, isn't it? Yes. Token yes. Razar. <laughs> I like how they say Razar and Razar and like Token Taka, like in the movie. Like they say they pronounce both of the names differently depending on the scene. And just depending, they're covering their bases. Mm. I always like Toka and Razar. Uh, that was actually what I always preferred. I think it's what April <laughs> calls them. Oh yeah, yeah. you're right. Well, I think she calls him Razar. I, I know you're. Yeah, sorry. He's trying to get you to fight Toka and Razar again. Forgot the sunscreen. Oh no! The sunscreen. Yeah. Be I'm careful sorry. of hitting those boards that have little like uh, pieces on them. Those will actually like launch you or break your nose. Oh. Oh wow. It's like stepping on a rake. Exactly. That's exactly what it's just watch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, sure. There's like dynamite here. Yep, that's a bomb. You can hit it to damage enemies around. A bomb? Wait till there's enemies nearby it though, then you can strike oh. it. Oh, well, I'm coming behind you there. <laughs> Whoa. Anyway. There we go. There you go. Got him. Big guy, too. Yeah, the big guys always take so many hits, so it's always a good thing to take them down as fast as you can. Oh, man. Got you in the balls, oh, man. Right yeah. in the balls. That's what it looks like. He's holding them because they hurt because I punched them. Mm -hmm. So, wait. I get, uh, I get like... Commented on for what I said, but Tim doesn't get anything for that. <laughs> well, I didn't even hear well, what he said. I, I don't know. Was... He said like his balls were hurting or something. I said the foot soldier's balls were hurting. Oh, okay. Big, so, big yeah. difference. Hey, if you're kicking yeah. them in the nuts, then yeah. Your balls weren't hurting, you just hurt someone else's balls. Much different. Yeah. Much different circumstances. Oops. That was for a second there. Ooh, wait, hey, hello. Oh. <laughs> okay, I got a story for you guys. Oh god, he got real excited for a oh, second. Oh no, okay, what so, um... I've been in physical oh. training for a few years now. Um, okay. You know, I, um, and like they have me do all sorts of exercises that I- Ah, damn it, I thought I'd hit them. Uh, they, had me, they had me do all sorts of exercises that I would totally never do on my own or even know about. And the other day they wanted to get my blood pumping before we got started, you know, it's typical. Okay. And um, my trainer gave me a jump rope. And he was like, here, jump rope for like 60 seconds. And I'm like, uh... You've never jumped rope before, have you? And he's just like, whoa, what's wrong? Because like, I've never like turned down an exercise before. And he goes, I just go, I've never jump roped in my entire life. <laughs> and he's just like, you'll do fine, okay? You'll be good. So, oh, yeah, I... I've seen you hula hoop. It I, probably went I, terrible. I, I, thinking that. I put the jump rope behind my head, swung it around once, it hit me in the back of the head, flung around and hit me in the crotch, and I fell over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in man. one swing, that was what it did. And then he went, okay, let's swing the rope around instead. <laughs> it was <Yeah>. really funny. <laughs> oh, Tim really needed that pizza. No, Flashing okay. light warning. I wasn't even looking at my life for a second. Like, Whoa. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. Yeah, this is really bad, unfortunately, but... Yeah. Oh, whatever. It was just back in the day where they're like, ooh, more flashing lights I mean, more someone impressive. talked to me about CRTs apparently also soften this blow. There they are! Token Razor! My yeah. boys! <laughs> uh, unironically, some of my favorite Ninja Turtle characters. <laughs> the babies! Oh. <laughs> babies! Oh. Um... I remember that a long time ago, I saw a James Rolfe video where he was talking about going to a drive-in theater to see a double feature of the first two Turtles movies. <laughs> yeah. And he had to go home in the middle. Of, he had to go home in the middle of the second movie because it was like one in the morning. And he was doing a drive home, and he had his radio still tuned to the movie to see like how long it could go, like before he lost the signal. Yeah. And he's driving down the highway at like one a.m., no sleep, with his like friends in the back seat, and <laughs> he was saying that. Um, it, the signal was now overlapping with like some radio station, and so he heard like this pop song in like terrible quality interspersed with Shredder going, BABY! <laughs> he said it was one of the funniest things in his life that he wished he had a recording of, but like the moment's gone and he'll never have it again. And That's that just, so really funny though. It's really good! Like, oh my god, it was funny. They're getting weaker. We're gonna turn them back into a regular turtle and a wolf. Yep. The reintroduction of CO2. They're not really attacking that much. Like they just kind of mm. take a lot of gunfire. Oh, and they also like they have big knockback. One hit from them just basically sends back. Yeah. Oh, there goes. Well, oh, we did turn him back into a wolf, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And there we go. That's the other one. Yeah, I know that uh, in the uh, Super Nintendo you fight Bebop and Rocksteady on this level. Yep. 
Mm-mm. And they're dressed in pirate gear, which is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Absolutely amazing. Dude, in Shredder's <laughs> Revenge, I love the subplot of Bebop having a successful television career. And, like, every time you see a TV in, like, any stage, he has, like, a different show. Like, in one, he's, like, a talk show host. In another one, he's a chef. <laughs> it's great. Very much. Ooh, shell wounded there. knee. All right. How you feeling about the game so far, boys? Because we're actually, like, mm. two-thirds through it already. Oh, it's a fun time. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, beat-em-ups are inherently a bit repetitive, though, but it just feels good, and, like, the references to the stuff that I kind of know, I like it. Bossa Nova. I really should just watch the show. I get the feeling I'd love it. You would, I, like, the original series is pretty cheesy. Uh, the Four Kids version was pretty good, and a good mix of serious and cheesy. I've heard that. 2012 is fantastic. Uh... I've heard some people say that's their favorite superhero TV show. Yeah, I mean, because, well, I don't think there's really been a bad version. Like, I haven't watched much of Rise, but those who did said it was also fantastic, even though it changed the like the nature of the group a lot. Well, the next mutation. <laughs> okay, you know what? I will stand up for the next mutation. Really? Yes! Oh, oh my I will stand God. up for nah, 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 ninja. Ninja Turtles. Uh, I watched that entire run, I'm pretty oh sure, when God. it was It out. was lost media for years. Really? Yeah, it was. There was, like... I think there were only home media releases of it in, like, other countries. Oh, you know what? Okay, that's fair. That might be the case there for that. Yeah. Yeah, like, I didn't mind Venus. I mean, like, she was really soft-spoken and, like, really, like, like, I'm more zen than Leonardo. This is so Leonardo will finally get to do something in the plot. <laughs> uh, mm. But, like, at the same time, like, the show was fine. Like, it had a bunch of things that kind of carried over to, like, the mainstay things. Like, I think that's where, like, Raph's, like, superhero or, like, vigilante persona started from. Mikey had a radio station that he would drive around and just do pirate radio shows. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Like, he would drive around like the Turtles, like, Hummer and just, like, run a radio show. Um, God, the hell if I remember what Donnie and Leo were doing. And, like, the, and, like half the storyline <laughs> was trying to get Splinter back because I think he had been, like, I've heard of it, he actually been kidnapped or, like, his spirit had been kidnapped by Lord whatever Dracon or whatever. I think I heard that in season two they were planning for, like, the plotline to be the turtles getting through the death of a family member and people thought it might be Splinter based on what they were saying. Oh. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the series have kind of hinted at that and I think the comics have even actually gone to that. Yeah, they, I mean, apparently apparently been... the IDW comic run right now is, like, incredible. Oh, wow, okay. Some, I know that some continuities, like, imply that, like, Splinter has passed away. Yeah. Yeah, I know, like, the, the current turtle, uh, the current run of IDW actually has also put in a female turtle again, and a, and a different <laughs> character at that. Ironically, I think that uh, Leonardo would have, like, more to do if Splinter just wasn't there, though, because I don't really get, like, why the turtles, like, need a leader, though, because I always saw them as four equals under Splinter. Oh, someone accidentally reactivated a rewind. Oh, sorry. Uh oh I might have, like, barely tapped a button. Yeah, um... I don't know, well, it's because the whole point is that they're they're family in a way, like, you need, in family, you need someone who's at least focused if you're all working together. And let's be real, as much as I love Michelangelo, that boy ain't focused at all. <laughs> uh, same with Raph, in a way, he's just focused on pure anger, and Donnie's always just focused on science. Raph kind of has, like, overambition as a problem, I feel. Yeah, like, this is the whole thing about, like, the, the CG Ninja Turtles movie that we watched, like, TMNT. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the whole point about, like, they all, like, kind of fill each other's gaps. Leo know? had a good, had a good spot in that movie. It was the first time that I really felt for him, though, because he was, like, trying to get the team back together and yeah. all that. Like, I felt like that was a good storyline to do for Leo. That movie was pretty good. And uh, I like that it's in the same continuity as the live action movies. That was a nice touch. And you I, can tell the people making it were fans. I hope someday they do a uh, comic, or like not a comic series, a, uh, a cartoon series or like a movie special on, I think it's called Ronin? It's um, of the last Ninja Turtle because the others have been killed off and uh, the remaining turtle actually like goes out and just tries to get revenge and stop the Foot Clan who basically took over. Uh, if you had to guess Pizza which time. turtle actually survived out of the four Pizza the longest time. in that series, who would you guess? Uh, let's say, uh, let's say Donatello. Tim? I was gonna say Donatello also. Michelangelo. Oh, oh Michelangelo wow. is the one who ends up surviving the longest, and he ends up actually being becoming. Oh, like, I think it's Ronan. I think Ronan Turtle is what they call it, or something like that. I guess you did oh. tell me that canonically Michelangelo is sometimes the strongest. Canonically, the problem is <laughs> Michelangelo basically has ADHD, uh, so he can't focus on things. But when you get him focused, that's when he does the most damage. Basically, uh, in certain storylines, he tends to win the. Uh, Ooh, wow. What's it called? Like the the battle nexus. He does kind of have like a momentum thing going on. Like when he gets serious, he's nuts. <laughs> yeah. Like he. Uh, I mean, that's the thing too, because 
nunchucks are actually like a really hard weapon to use as well. They require like the most concentration, mm -hmm. and he's the least focused, and he's gotten become a master oh. of that. So that's the whole logic behind it. He's actually got the hardest of the four weapons to use. Mm -hmm. I always felt like Leo kind of had an unfair advantage with like how good his weapon is. But yeah, so here's the thing, and someone broke this down in a way that I thought was really interesting. That's where the Michelangelo uh, and the nunchuck thing came from. Uh, Leo actually does have the most powerful weapon. He's the only one that technically can cut. However, he has to use it to not cut people. Like he never, he has to learn to not kill with it. That's his training. Oh yeah, that'd be tough. Wrath, so size are traditionally for defense. So Wrath is supposed to learn how to use a, like a defensive weapon as a very aggressive character. That's why he's literally learned how to impale people and like stab them with a weapon that normally is for disarming. <laughs> And Donatello has a bow staff because he's so obsessed with technology, he had to learn the simplest things can sometimes be the best. So that hence a wooden stick. Like that breakdown I always thought was like really, really brilliant, cool. like a great breakdown of the characters. I like that. Cowabunga!